Good morning and good day to all audience and viewers from Masa University Facebook page and YouTube channel. Welcome to the webinar conducted by Faculty of Engineering, Blue Environment and Information Technology of Masa University. My name is Siti Shahira, a lecturer from Masa University and I will be serving as your moderator today. Today, we will be hearing a presentation from T.S. Muhammad Khairil Azhar bin Mahmud. T.S. Muhammad Khairil is the Deputy Researcher, Deputy Researcher Officer at Microwave Research Institute, MRI, UATM Shah Alam. He used to serve as R&D Electrical Engineer in Motorola. His research interest is in the microwave engineering field where he works extensively in the process of circuit design, fabrication process and also the measurement process involved in any particular project. He is also doing research in the nanotechnology-based materials for microwave applications. His current research is on the microwave non-destructive testing at X-band frequency. Without further ado, I would like to welcome T.S. Muhammad Khairil who will be speaking to us with topic microwave non-destructive testing MNDT. All right, T.S. Muhammad Khairil, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Shahira. Uh, first of all, I would like to... Uh, uh, appreciate uh, Masa for giving me this slot and uh, just a sharing session from me. Uh, by the way, I'm Kyriel, uh, currently working in uh, UITM uh, in one of the COE uh, named Microwave Research uh, Institute. Okay, I'm currently uh, serving as the Deputy Research Officer and prior to my work experience in UITM, I used to um, serve at Motorola Technologies uh, in Penang where I serve as the R&D electrical engineer. So uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, that is my email and my contact number in case that we have, uh, uh, if you guys are interested in doing uh, this uh, kind of research, maybe we can have a collaboration later on. So uh, allow me to just introduce uh, my uh, workplace, which is uh, I'm working at uh, Microwave Research Institute. Uh, again, uh, we are a center for excellence and we are re directly reporting to the office of the uh, NCPNI in UITM. And we started as a research group way back in 1987. And uh, currently we are doing a few services. As you can see, we are doing the RF and wireless subsystem design hybrid and monolithic uh, microwave integrated circuit design, high frequency material, uh, computer edit design. In this uh, CAD design, we own two software, which is uh, Genesis and also um, CST. So we have the official license for that. Uh, next, uh, we also doing uh, services on MNDT. And lastly, uh, on the high frequency on wafer measurement. But uh, the past two years, we venture into new uh, field where we introduce the field of AI and we have few experts on AI currently on our team. So basically, uh, MRI uh, is led by our director, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Zohani, and we have few members, uh, namely uh, Dr. Magat, who specialized in AI, Dr. Kairul Kaizi, also uh, specialized on the uh, satellite, Dr. Noemelin also on satellite, Dr. Amalina uh, is on the sensors, Dr. Esan is our expert on AI also. So, and I'm here, I'm the uh, deputy research officer. Basically, I will do all the measurement uh, involving the high frequency on, on or RF uh, circuit that uh, being done by my team. So all the measurement part, I'll uh, take care on it. So without further ado, um, let us uh, uh, let me share with you on my topic today, which is uh, microwave non-destructive testing. The word uh, MNDT came from two sections. The first section is the microwave, and the second section is non-destructive testing. So. Uh, 
it is a non-destructive testing. From the word itself, it is a, a technique used to inspect and evaluate materials, components and structures without causing any damage. So we are not uh, touching the DUT or device on the test, be it uh, in the form of any uh, type of it. We have done uh, research on NDT using fluid, using um, bricks, and then even uh, on organic material like blood, we're also doing some research on uh, medical uh, field. Next, uh, MDT plays a crucial role in ensuring the quality, reliability, and safety of various industries. So it doesn't uh, just only in the field of engineering, it also includes uh, aerospace, automotive, uh, manufacturing, and also construction. If you do your uh, some reading, you can see that NDT is quite popular in the field of construction, where it has been widely used uh, by contractors uh, to check and inspect the material or any defects on the structure that, that they are using. Uh, microwave non disruptive testing, MNDT, the short form is MNDT, it is a specialized branch of NDT where we utilize the microwave frequencies uh, for inspection purposes. So I'm hoping this uh, sharing session, I would uh, provide an overview uh, of MNDT, the principle of MNDT, the advantages, application, and what are the future developments that uh, we expect uh researchers uh will venture on uh in the future with the aid of mndt so before we go further we need to know what is the principle of mndt uh first of all the electromagnetic wave and their interactions with the material so basically microwaves are a form of uh electromagnetic radiation where it have a wavelength ranging from one millimeter to one meter so when this microwave interacts with the materials they can be reflected absorbed or transmitted based on that material properties again the material uh, ranges from any kind of shape be it fluid be it uh, uh, brick or any material that you can think of as long as it is, uh, it is a non-metallic one. Okay, next, uh, microwave frequency range used in this uh, MNDT typically uh, ranges from the 300 uh, megahertz to 300 gigahertz. This range allows for effective penetration and interaction with a wide range of materials. As for me, uh, in MRI, we have uh, one setup uh, for the x band which uh, from the range of 8 to 12 uh, gigahertz, and also we have one setup on the K-band, 18 to 22.5 gigahertz. But most of my research is on the x band uh, We do research with the LDM, we do research with industries, with other universities, uh, mostly uh, most of us are interested with the expense <clears throat> and then reflection absorption and transmission of microwave as i said earlier uh, the behavior of microwave when they are interacting with the material uh, they will uh, basically be reflected absorbed or being transmitted so reflection occurs when uh, the microwave bounces back from the material surface absorption on the other hand, happens when the microwave are absorbed by the, that material and transmission occurs when a microwave pass through the material. Next, uh, what, uh, why, basically why we are using or opting for this uh, kind of technology, namely the MNDT. First of all, it is a non-destructive nature you can uh, opt for few more options when you are measuring uh, any materials. Basically, uh, that 
uh, there are two uh, kind of measurement. One is the disruptive testing. The second that we are sharing today is the non-disruptive testing. Why we are choosing this non-disruptive testing? Because it will not uh, break or interfere with your material. So uh, this is uh, important because uh, when we are dealing with uh, valuable or sensitive components, okay, so we don't want to introduce any kind of uh, any kind of uh, interaction with that material. We want the materials to give us the reading by itself without any interference of other things. Next, uh, it is also considered a fast and efficient technique. Uh, MNDT techniques are generally quick and efficient, uh, and it also provides a, a rapid result compared to the traditional destructive testing method. So by doing this, it uh, can enable us uh, to have a faster decision making and reduce downtime in industries like me. Uh, typically, when I'm doing uh, MNDT uh, research, I will just take around per sample, I'll say less than two minutes. But uh, it all also depends on the calibration process. Basically, the calibration process is the most uh, time consuming process when you are dealing with uh, MNDT uh, procedure. So once you have done with your calibration, the rest for the measurement will just take maybe one to two minutes only. So if you have 10 samples, it's just what, uh, 10 to 20 minutes. So it is a very fast and efficient uh, procedure. Next, uh, MNDT can also be considered as a, it is a versatile kind of uh, measurement where it can be applied to a wide range of uh, materials. For example, uh, it can be composite, ceramics, polymers, as I said, I done with uh, liquid, dead liquid ranges from water where we check the water quality, blood also where we check the diabetic, uh, uh, where we check the diabetic patient. So we see from this kind of blood, okay, what blood uh, for a normal or a healthy person will look like? And for a person with a diabetic, what are the reading of uh, his or her blood? So we characterize uh, each uh, kind of blood and then we see, okay, this is the measurement or the range of measurement for a healthy or a person with a diabetic. That is just an example. And also, we also did uh, research on the structures uh, like uh, we have uh, research from the civil engineering where they bring us a block of concrete a few type of concrete and from there we can see the structures uh, integrity uh, and then uh, next is a uh, by mndt also it have a high penetration uh, capability as you know that uh, microwave have the ability to penetrate through thick materials uh, allowing for inspection of structures or components that may be difficult to assess using other techniques like i said we done with uh, concrete or any material as long as it's, uh, if, if we can just keep the non-metal uh, the metallic kind of material next um, so where basically we apply this MNDT uh, this is not a limited to the example that uh, I'm showing here Basically, they are uh, applied to a wide range of uh, industries, but I'll just uh, give three for, for now. So we have uh, MNDT being applied in the aerospace industry, uh, where we are checking the composite material, the aircraft structures, uh, where by doing this, uh, we try to detect the hidden defects, uh, the delamination and void to ensure the structural integrity and safety of uh, aircraft components. 
uh, we also have a previous um, interest from TLDM where they want to check the uh, fractures of their kapal perang. So the warcraft. So we want to uh, check whether it is uh, good or not. So that one is the upcoming research that will be done in uh, MRI. And next, we also have a uh, uh, MNDP being used in, in the food industry. So, in food industry, basically, they are used uh, to detect the foreign objects such, a, such as a metal or glass fragment in packaged product without opening or damaging the product. This uh, is to ensure the safety uh, of the consumer and also to prevent a product recall, which uh, when we have that kind of preparation, it will uh, cost the company a lot of money. So we need to have this kind of thing. Okay. Next, uh, as I said earlier, uh, MNDT can also be applied in the construction industry where we try to evaluate the condition of concrete structures. So we can help to detect void, delamination and uh, moisture ingress helping to identify potential weakness. Okay, so as I said earlier, we have a uh, research from civil engineering where they want us to check the uh, concrete, certain type of concrete, and we have done that. And we can say that MNDT have the ability to check for it. So basically, there are a few MNDT techniques, but I just want to share on the current one that I'm using. Uh, it is called the free space measurement method or short form of FSMM. So what basically is FSMM? So it uh, involves uh, the measuring the microwave signal in free space. So basically, uh, we put the material into the sample holder without touching it, without uh, interfering with it. So uh, we don't uh, put any kind of direct contact. So uh, this setup uh, have antenna. So as you can see here, this is the setup that we have uh, in MRI. This setup consists of, as you can see here, we have the VNA. Next, we have two transmitting antenna. So this antenna is uh, working on the range of 8 to 12 gigahertz, which is uh, falls under the X band. So here in the middle is the uh, sample holder. This is the place that uh, we put our sample. Uh, our current research, we are looking into the ripeness of fruits, uh, where we have done uh with uh, mangoes and now we are looking into the uh, pineapple as you know that malaysia or even selangor is famous for its pineapple so in selangor we have that yankee varieties we also have the md2 so we are trying to use mndt to check the ripeness of the uh, pineapple and it was a success and we are waiting for the journals to be published later on. So as I said, uh, I have also used uh, MNDT to check on the water quality where, where uh, this research has been featured in the uh, documentary in TV Satu where I use the MNDT to check the water that has been polluted. So we took the water from few locations, namely from the Sungai Tua side and also from uh, the river in uh, Selangor. So from that research, uh, we can see that MNDT were able to check for water pollution. So we have a benchmark of uh, what uh, is the clear water looks like, water without any kind of pollution, and then we characterize it with water that has been polluted with uh, many kind of things. So uh, that uh, research is uh, has been done before, and 
we can see that MNDT has the ability to check on the water quality. And we are uh, also having few uh, previous work. I'm just focusing on uh, the this year and last year. So for the year of 2022 and 2023, we have few. Uh, for example, in uh, publication number one and two, we are using MNDT to check on the coffee. So that is uh, my current research. Uh, I'm also working with industry on this thing. Next, we also using MNDT to check on the edible oils, where in this research, we check for few kind of oil, the cooking oil. Uh, and then next, we, we also uh, use MNDT in publication number four, we check on the fat contamination of uh, meat. Uh, we are using this research. We are checking the meat of uh, lamb, chicken, and also beef. Uh, next on five, we are also doing the dielectric material measurement. So this paper basically uh, checks on the post-process of uh, MNDT, where you got that raw data and then you transform it using some kind of algorithm that we have in-house uh, using MATLAB programming. So we have uh, successfully uh, applied for IP for that uh, programming and now it is being used uh, in-house. Lastly, we also use MNDT to check for animal fat, where in this uh, paper, we check on the halal and non-halal uh, fats. We have the pork or lard, and, and we try to see whether MNDT can differentiate within the halal uh, fat and the non-halal fat. And yes, uh, we see that MNDT were able to differentiate between the halal and non-halal. Next, uh, we also have few. I just uh, put here the current uh, consultancy that uh, we have done. So we have done a few with UPM. Uh, basically, in UPM, we are in good relation with Institute Nano Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. And we are also in currently doing uh, consultancy research with uh, Sungai Harmony. They are the subsidiaries for Aislango. So we are checking on the water sample there. Okay, that is basically what uh, my previous work and consultancy project in MNDT. So we are moving on the challenges in MNDT. Yes, we know MNDT is good, but it also has few challenges. Uh, for instance, uh, for the comp complex material properties. Material can have complex uh, electromagnetic properties where we have challenges where it is uh, quite challenging to accurately interpret the microwave signal. So for example, if that uh, material has some kind of metal in it, it will make it uh, quite difficult because the reading will be uh, not normal where it will have the negative uh, sign there. So basically, when I have the raw data, when I see the negative uh, value, I know there may be uh, some kind of metal inside that material. And then again, with MNDT, you need to have a good calibration and standardization. So calibration is the most time consuming. We have uh, to calibrate it uh, until we have the uh, the benchmark. So in my case, the FSMM, I need to calibrate it until I have the value of 180 degrees and 0 dB with the uh, differences of 0.2 dB and plus minus of 2 degrees. So until I get that kind of benchmark, I would not able to proceed with my measurement. So it is uh, quite challenging if you're doing it the first time, but it will be more difficult later on. Next is the signal interference and noise. 
So <coughs> MNDT are being affected by external factors such as uh, electromagnetic uh, interference or background noise, where this kind of interference and noise will affect the quality of the microwave uh, signal, which will later on uh, lead to the inaccuracies in measurement. So uh, next, lastly, equipment limitation and cost. Yes, uh, we have to admit that MNDT, uh, the setup cost is very high, like uh, the setup that I shown earlier in the previous slide, the whole setup, uh, maybe you need to spend around 1 to 1.5 million. So you need to invest in your equipment first. Okay, I'm uh, moving to the next slide with the advancements in MNDT. So this is where all the research uh, heading next. So uh, we are taking MNDT uh, first with the advanced signal processing uh, algorithm. So right now there are a few research where they develop uh, uh, signal processing algorithms uh, to enhance the capabilities of uh, MNDT techniques. So this algorithm uh, will enable to provide uh, improved data analysis, noise reduction, uh, and feature extraction. Next, uh, there's also uh, some work uh, done on the miniaturization and portability. So as you can see in my earlier slide, we have uh, that one is FSMM uh, setup. So it is quite a big setup. Now the uh, advancement in technology that have led to the uh, miniaturization and portability of MNDT equipment, where we want it to be smaller and more portable devices to inspect uh, in remote location, for example. Next, we also try to integrate uh, MNDT with other techniques, uh, where we try to, for instance, combine the MNDT with uh, imaging techniques such as infrared or ultrasound. Lastly, uh, the non-disruptive uh, evaluation standard, the NDE standard, we are also trying to have uh, a certain standard which is recognized by international uh, level so that the, everybody is doing uh, measurement with that kind of standard. So, with standard, you'll know that you are doing the right thing. And then uh, moving to the next slide, uh, MNDT is used in various uh, fields, for instance, the quality control in, in manufacturing, structural health monitoring, the NDT, medical diagnostic, uh, agriculture and food industry, like I said, uh, we are doing in pineapple research right now and also environmental monitoring. For instance, in this uh, environmental uh, monitoring, we are assessing the soil moisture or we measure the water content in the vegetation. Next, uh, the future trends in MNDT. We are uh, saying that uh, MNDT right now, we are integrating it with uh, IoT, where with IoT, it can help to enable uh, real-time monitoring, data analytics, and remote control of inspection system. Uh, next, we also try to introduce AI and ML, where in my first uh, two papers uh, in the previous slide, I'm using AI to check on the coffee roast level. level. Next, we're also uh, venturing into wireless and contactless MNDT. Uh, this technique uh, eliminates the need for physical contact with the material being inspected. And also with the multi-model and multi-sensors approach, uh, we integrate it with multiple sensing modalities and sensors in MNDT to allow it for a more comprehensive and accurate assessment. Next is the real-time uh, imaging and visualization. Uh, this uh, will allow operators to make uh, immediate decision and identify defects 
and take appropriate action in real time. Uh, lastly, uh, we are also uh, taking uh, MNDT in terms of uh, the advanced material and structures. So as new material and structures are being developed, MNDT techniques need to adapt uh, to their unique properties. So future trend in MNDT involved in the development of specialized techniques for advanced materials such as uh, composite, nanomaterials, uh, to ensure their quality, integrity, and performance. So, I believe, yeah, it is 30 minutes, Shahira. <laughs> I, I believe uh, that's all my sharing session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, T.S. Muhammad Khair, for your sharing. Now, we have come to question and answer sessions. So, there are several questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, for water pollution, what is the parameter that being used for purifications of clean water? Okay, so uh, for water, uh, previously uh, I have two papers on it. Uh, first, we check on the water quality. So water quality, we take several water samples from uh, different locations and then we benchmark it with uh, uh, our what clear water, for example, the tap water or the uh, we have like a coway. So we benchmark this kind of water is the the unpolluted kind of water. Whereas for the other polluted uh, sample, we see from MNDT, it can uh, differentiate uh, because the end result of MNDT is the dielectric permittivity. So from that dielectric permittivity value, we know uh, for this polluted water, it will uh, be in the range of maybe two or three uh, dielectric uh, permittivity where the DP for uh, unpolluted will be at one, for example. So we characterize and benchmark it with the unpolluted and we see the polluted uh, water. Thank you. Okay, uh, and then next question is, what is standard that you use for calibra calibration purpose? What is standard? Uh, FSMM, we are using the standard of TRL, T for true, R for reflect, L is for line. So I believe if you're using like different kind of uh, manufacturers for your VNA, like uh, as I know, Keysight, and uh, I'm using now RNS, they are having different acronym, but basically it is just the same. So we are using TRL for this uh, amenity that I have in my place through reflect line. Okay, and there is a last question from the audience where he mentioned that as he has his information because of microwave non destruction testing is using frequency. How mm -hmm. about food industry? How the applications of uh, microwave to clarify halal and non halal food? Okay, again, if uh, uh, you relate it to my the first question that you asked. So basically, the end result for the measurement, we call it the raw data. From that raw data, we are uh, processing it uh, into our MATLAB uh, algorithm. So from that MATLAB, we are able to check for its dielectric permittivity. So basically, uh, for each and every sample, they will have different kind of dielectric permittivity. So uh, for example, uh, uh, the LUT, LUT maybe it will sit on the value of 3, whereas the for chicken, beef, and <coughs> lamb, it will be different value of DP. So we are characterizing the halal and non-halal using uh, the dielectric permittivity. Thank you. Okay, I think that's a very clear explanation from uh, T.S. Kairil. So, thank you again for your clear explanations. So, now we have come to the end part of the presentation. 
Thank you again to TS Muhammad Khairil for addressing this interesting topic and for this sharing sessions. Hopefully, the presentation was beneficial for everyone. On behalf of Masa University, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time and cooperation. See you in the next webinar session. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.